200 amps delivering continuous power for up to 10 years. 200, okay, what? <laughs> Today we're going to be checking out a home nuclear reactor by Enron. Nuclear you can trust. Yes, because Enron is a shining beacon of corporate social responsibility. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see what this is all about. This product is gonna revolutionize three critical industries. Okay. The power industry. Uh-huh. The independence <laughs> industry. And the freedom industry. This product. The freedom and the independence industry. <laughs> okay, I mean, I already knew this was a joke, but mentioning Enron, but all right. This is, this is pretty good. Is gonna revolutionize all three. Are you getting it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. This is like every big tech company reveal ever. We have harnessed the power of the atom. Sure. Introducing the Enron egg. The world's <laughs> first micronuclear reactor for residential suburban use. <laughs> okay. Uh, what kind of power is this thing going to produce that's that small? <laughs> okay, where's your radiation shielding? Neutron's going to require quite a bit of concrete, so this runs on fission or fusion for that matter. <laughs> Where is it? This little device can power your entire home for up to 10 continuous years. I mean, assuming this thing runs on uranium, you only need a few hundred grams to last a typical American household, which America is one of the more energy intensive countries, 10 years. So the egg is small enough to house something that small, but lack of radiation shielding and heat dissipation challenges. <laughs> It goes without saying, but when you put a nuclear reactor in your home, it's got to be safe for the whole family. Mm -hmm. I've been living with an egg for a few months now, and let me just tell you <laughs> that my little ones, they freaking love it, especially when what we save on the energy glow. bill, we can spend on Christmas presents. Oh, okay. Do your kids hate candy? Your little ones about that age can appreciate the uh, value added from cheaper electricity bills. That's advanced. Camping as much as mine? Well, let's just say they're gonna like it now. Because for the first time in history, you can bring the comfort of your living room out into the world. <laughs> Playing the newest game from your favorite console under so the stars camping? is just a whole other experience. But here at Enron, we care about the intersection of technology. So you can take it with you. So where are you plugging this thing in? It doesn't even, even if you somehow compressed an entire <laughs> power generation and distribution system into that little thing, where do you plug it in? <laughs> or are those plugs as imaginary as Enron's front companies? Technology and nature, which is why I'm proud to announce that Enron has teamed up with FEMA to provide to provide <laughs> nuclear eggs to rapid response teams all around the globe. Wow, what a thing. So for those of you who don't know FEMA, that's um, Federal Emergency Response Management. And yeah, um, the idea of <laughs> a company like Enron partnering with the federal government on portable nuclear reactors. I mean, Enron was an energy company, it wasn't a good energy company, but... <laughs> All of this made possible by the Enron Mining Division, Ooh. which has been sourcing the proprietary enronium ore, which I think you'll agree. Enronium ore. Okay. Now that makes sense. It runs off of some magic enronium it's right on. It's probably right next to unobtainium. Three <laughs> has unlocked a new atomic age because that's what it's all about, wow. folks. Making the world a better place, one egg at a time. <laughs> Thank you. Can you buy them by the dozen? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our chief Tell technology me. officer, 
the man responsible for the design and engineering oh, of this egg, Mr. Daniel Wong. <laughs> These little transitions and jingle, yeah, every, every big tech company ever. You know, ever since I was a kid, I loved taking apart all my toys and computers to see how they work. You don't want to take this one now, apart. <laughs> let's do that with the Enron egg. We have to start with the extreme heat resistance okay. made possible by its advanced Enronium casing. Okay, so Enronium is your heat shield. Okay, all right. So heat resistance, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say it's also good at stopping neutron radiation and, you know, gammas, betas, what have you from your fission products. Assuming this is fission, I may be jumping the gun here by saying it runs on fission. Each unit provides a reliable output of 200 amps delivering continuous power for up to 10 years. 200, okay, what? <laughs> okay, 200 amps, uh, I mean, that's typical household amperage, though it depends where you live. There are some houses that require 400 amps, the ones with really big heaters. And then you got the older houses that have fuse boxes instead of breaker boxes that are less than 100. But that's not the point, because 200 amps is a unit of current, not a unit of power. So no one talks about a reactor's amperage. <laughs> You talk about its power output measured in terms of, well, I was going to say megawatts, but for household, you're going to be on the kilowatt end of the spectrum, and I'll be at the low end. A typical household is on the order to one, maybe two kilowatts of continuous energy use, but I know they're clearly joking, but yeah, if we're going to go ahead and measure it in amps, continuous 200 amps, you might as well just be saying you're going to tell me what the frequency is. Continuous 60 hertz. I mean, okay, cool, but that doesn't really tell me how much of it I can use or how much of the house it can carry. <laughs> Before requiring refueling. Oh, so you refuel it. Yeah. They're not expendable, so you can actually refuel these. So even if this Enronium was magical, good luck refueling it because as soon as you open it up, high heat, High radiation, or does it use like teleportation technology or something? Here's how it works. At the heart of the egg lies a uranium zirconium hydrid fueled reactor. Okay, that is actually a real thing. So that fuel is typically used in research reactors, trigger reactors, pulse reactors, basically reactors that people play with in universities. Now the advantage of that is it does have a high negative reactivity coefficient with respect to temperature. That is to say, when temperature raises, it shuts itself down, which is an inherent safety feature. It's actually really nice to have, which is great for trigger reactors where you're studying, testing it, playing with it, pushing nuclear technology to its limits in an experiment. It's also pretty expensive to produce, though probably not as expensive as uranium. Compare that to uranium dioxide, which is the fuel pellets used in power plants designed for long-term, steady, safe, sustainable operation. Chosen for its safety and efficiency. The nuclear... It's not as efficient. You can argue it's safer because the strong negative reactivity coefficient, but at the same time, that also means small changes can cause big effects. So it can actually make it harder to control at scale, but this is a small scale thing. So I'll, I'll give them a pass on that. Reactor is precisely regulated by nine boron control drums located drums. around the perimeter to maintain balance Located on the perimeter. Okay, so is it like shells? Because I see the fuel rods in there. I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about. Also, you have something cylindrically shaped into an egg-shaped object. I'm wondering why that's the case. Is it just to make it cute like a lot of tech companies like to do, as opposed to being functional? And stability. That's nuclear power you can trust. It's less stable than alternatives, but okay. That part actually isn't bad, though. It's even got a little TV, so our team's always watching. 
hydrogen enriched heavy water. Wait, so like they're watching you or they're watching the plant through the TV? Then why would it? You just need sensor modules and you can have a TV remotely. Or are you saying someone from Enron Nuclear or whatever comes to your house and is there as the reactor operator? Which would be more consistent with current federal regulations because you need to be licensed and qualified to operate a reactor even if it's teeny teeny tiny. Now the process can be relatively simple, but even the toy reactors at universities, you still need to get trained on to be a reactor operator or a senior reactor operator, the reactor operator's boss, in order to run a nuclear reactor. So I'm wondering if that's what he's getting at. <laughs> in the primary cooling module, slows fission reactions and a robust pump. Now cooling does not slow fission reactions, especially not with er not with heavy water. Heavy water slows down neutrons so they cause more fission reactors, assuming you're using it as, as a coolant and a moderator, which you're probably going to do something like that because you're so limited in terms of space. But no, it doesn't slow fission reactions. In fact, if you lose the coolant, the fission reaction is going to shut itself down pretty quickly. But things are going to heat up and you're going to have high radiation dose, so you don't want to lose the coolant. <laughs> drives the system's cooling, ensuring consistent performance and extended lifespan. For your safety, all- So heavy water is real and it is used in nuclear power plants such as the Kandu reactor. In fact, because of the heavy water is such a good moderator, it's good at slowing down neutrons and increasing the number of fissions, not decreasing them. You can use natural uranium as opposed to enriched uranium. Only certified Enron engineers have access to the internals of the egg, which only uses 20% enriched uranium. 20% enriched uranium. So 20% is actually the threshold for what's considered highly enriched uranium. Now, most nuclear weapons are upwards of 90% enriched, but it is an intermediate step towards making nuclear weapons. It can also be used in submarines, though a lot of them are also much higher enriched than 20% as well as research reactors. Now, research reactors can use as little as commercial nuclear power plants, which are on the order of 2 to 5%, or you can enrich them north of 20%. Now, there's additional regulatory hurdles you go through if you're going to do something like that, but say it, let's say it is the government doing an experiment on the reactor, then yeah, they would, um, they would just go through the necessary procedures for that. But being right at 20% is kind of a weird number. This is far too low to make an atomic weapon. It was- I mean, yeah, but you're also a lot closer to it than commercial nuclear power. So, <laughs> I have a feeling they chose 20% for a reason, because it's right at the threshold. Simply be impossible. If you try to make one with 20%, it would fizzle out. Back to you, Connor. Okay, um, so fuel that presumably comes in via magic, and they didn't mention anything about waste management, which, now conceivably, if this magic material exists, you could just take the egg, and if it's really that resistant to heat and radiation, then it would be safe to just keep it in there. <laughs> Unfortunately, the materials like that don't exist, so it would have to be actively monitored in a dry cast storage type uh, situation. Great job. <laughs> Great job. Daniel Wong. Daniel Wong. Uh, thank you so much for coming out today uh, to the Enron Power Summit. Uh, Enron we have a Power few eggs Summit. out in the lobby. Take a look at them, feel them, touch them. They're feel beautiful. Um, but I just want to, you know, give another shout out to, uh, to Dan. Do they have the Fabergé egg version of it, like the extra expensive one? Daniel here, he's just an incredible person for Enron. I'm so excited and just honored, honestly, uh, that someone that started off as a coworker a few years ago um, is now my friend. So. What? <laughs> That's a weird way to phrase it. Uh, this is funny. Um, until then, um, we'll see you next time. Okay. So if you're going to try to do something like this realistically, you're going to want to use something like 
low enriched uranium or thorium or some hybrid of the two as that's a safer fuel cycle with ultimately less proliferation risk. And you're going to need to make this a lot bigger if you're going to try to make it out of non-fictional materials for mainly for shielding. And possibly a liquid metal system is the only way to get it that small because the amount of heavy water to fit in there, no, that's that's not going to be enough as far as heat management. And its control systems would have to be monitored by a reactor operator. Even if you did employ, AI, employ AIs into this, one, they would have to go through the rigorous software quality assurance process um, in accordance with uh, federal regulations. But there's still going to need to be a reactor operator involved, even if it's like directing the AI in terms of things. The AI is not going to control stuff by itself. That's I don't see that happening anytime soon in nuclear. And its power output would probably be on the order of 10 to 20 kilowatts, so enough to do your home, enough for your home and a few neighbors and to charge your electric vehicle, sure. And its safety systems would need to be up to snuff. They barely even even talked about anything. Everything everything passively shut down because Unless reactor operators are going to live in somebody's neighborhood, you're, you're not going to rely on the homeowner to become a reactor operator. That's kind of an expensive process. <laughs> it's a lot more than when you get a new pool, um, the pool technician teaching you how to operate the pumps. There's a good bit more to it than that. But anyway, yes, I know this is a joke, but it was really funny. And ultimately, home reactors just not economical because nuclear is something that is generally better to build at scale. Sulfur nuclear is still on the order of megawatts relative instead of kilowatts. Thank you so much for watching. But thanks so much for the recommendation. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.